one of the aims of this conference has been bringing together industry and academia. In this sense, um, has the conference fulfilled the promises or the, the expectations? Absolutely. I've just talked to some of the professors and they first of all have been thrilled to have the opportunity to talk with each other after long time and also on that very high level. But secondly, they've also been impressed by the knowledge of the industry partners because sometimes the uh, academias, the universities, don't see what's going on in the industry and many of them founded their own companies. So like Chris Monroe from IonQ, who is also a professor and uh, so what we achieved over these two days is that those people started to collaborate not yet perhaps but to start to connect better than before so in that sense absolutely yes in the age of broadband internet and of zoom and or outlook uh, all, all these tools one could talk to each other via via wire or via fibers too why is it important bringing people physically together <laughs> well <laughs> go and mingle around during a coffee break If you saw the people mingling around during the Tangley Museum Festival, Tangley and Tangled, which we had forehand, or the Quantum Casino on Sunday, where they brought their kids along, students, young kid, uh, uh, children, girls and boys, 12, 14, 16, 19 year olds, and then mingling around here during the symposium as the third part of this trilogy, where they started this unstructured communication. And, you know, when I saw beforehand at the, the first day, the first break, the people who knew each other talked with each other. And then more and more I saw business cards exchanging. And today in the morning, the seating area in the back, which we uh, introduced as a lounge, has been the whole day full of people starting conversations. So you can't have this unstructured Uh, approach uh, just over video calls. And talking about Quantum Basel, what is now the, the, the learnings of Quantum Basel for the future, the learnings from this event? For us, it was a proof that our model works. We are a hub which connects industry partners. We've got a bright array of technologies with startups, with companies, corporates, and with academia. And with academia, I see twofold kind of academia partners. One is university, but also research institutes. Mm -hmm. And so as a hub who wants to connect those people, this is the, how shall I say, the formalization of our vision, where we see that exactly those kind of people work together. Because if you are not connected in a way, perhaps Companies like, I'd say, uh, from the pharma industry or from the security industry all have been here at this very conference. They don't get in touch with those kind of industry partners. But here, they can just stay there. And then our people, my people here from the team, but many else, just connected uh, one to each other. And this is what I definitely say, yes, it's a visualization of what we want to achieve. Mm. And speaking to you as a person, as a human being, how do you feel towards the end of the, the symposium? I feel thrilled. I know you have perhaps expected exhausted, sure. But you know, when you're in a flow, then the energy comes. And when I see these people connecting with, uh, with each other, then I know we are on the right track. And so it might come with perhaps with a surprise, but part of my team already started with next year's conference planning. And uh, perhaps I will elaborate a little bit more on that later. And within two weeks of now, I think on April 14th, we are part of the World Quantum Days, which we will conduct here. Simultaneously with live, uh, we will be in Barnaby in uh, Canada, in Sunnyvale in California, plus in Yorktown in New York. And I'm happy to announce that Beside our virtual events, which we talked about before, we will also have a physical event and in the afternoon for this very 
World Quantum Day, and instead of beer and pretzels, we will have quantum and quiche. You spoke about the next event in about two weeks, and what's the f f outlook more into the future? Quantum, Basel, what happens? We are very happy to announce that uh, we already said yesterday that 24 this conference will be an, on an annual format. It will be a three-day symposium and it won't be US-Switzerland symposium anymore. It will be the global symposium for industry and academia on quantum. And we are aiming towards 15 countries being part of this symposium. So I'm talking about Japan, I'm talking about Israel, part uh, delegation from Israel has been here in the morning, uh, UK, Holland, Scandinavia, US, Switzerland, and more countries to come. And so we will like to pursue this format on a much broader global level, as we saw, this is really the path to success. And thinking with perhaps a little self-criticism, what did you learn? What can you improve? We saw, frankly, that although we are connecting industry and academia, that we can even do more. Instead of having an industry part and an academia part and then followed by an industry part, we can perhaps connect them together in having one speaker from an industry, one speaker from the academia, and so on. So this is something we could improve. It's like industry and uh, academia entangled. Yes, <laughs> let's call them in a superposition. <laughs> superposition. But you know, there is something else I also want to raise here. And uh, this is something which we really have to think about. During the conference yesterday, UK announced another 2 billion investment into quantum computing. France has got billions of investment, Germany, other countries. We here in Switzerland, excluded, by the way, by Horizon. Mm -hmm. By the exclusion from Horizon? Yeah. Not just by the exclusion <laughs> of Horizon. We, although having all these great universities, we perhaps we wish to have more governmental support. Mm -hmm. I was more than happy to invite the, uh, the, somebody from the embassy in Washington, from the Swiss embassy in Washington, where I had the introduction here, and also to invite the US ambassador. He could not join us, but he sent a couple of, uh, from his team here and he will, uh, he will visit us soon. But I strongly believe that we as a country have potential to do more within this industry changing technology. And I think that beside our private funding, some governmental backup more than today would be needed. Do I hear a little complaint about too little interest, too little engagement of the, of the governmental side? I mean, I know that it's always a question of priorities. But if you look back, how already in the last 10 or 15 years, technology changed our lives, changed our industry, changed everything, then knowing that quantum computing will have another impact comparable with the computer industry over the last two decades, then I think, yes, we could do more. You talked about the development in the last 10, 20 years. Let's have a look further back, 50 years. The silicon-based uh, computing, the, the, the traditional, so to say, computing has had origins in Switzerland too, but the money have made those guys in Silicon Valley. <laughs> and do you fear that Switzerland sleeps again and misses the contact with the, with the development? I that history could repeat itself? <laughs> Over the last eight years, I've spent a lot of time in Silicon Valley. And uh, I want to perhaps rephrase it. First of all, the development of the computer chip with uh, Moore's Law came to a so-called end with the seven nanomillimeters thickness of the chip and then it came down to five millimeters and then the nanometers. question what Science. nanometers yeah. yes <laughs> so what mm -hmm. where to go mm -hmm. and quantum computing does solve this now because instead of these transistors these mechanical transistors they have now atoms as these transistors and so a completely new opportunities opening up and with the ETH, with the University of Basel, with the IPFL, with the University of Geneva, we have 
world leading experts researching in these kind of aspects. However, we see companies here, and this is the answer to your question, as soon as they have a kind of success, they either go for a small exit, I'm talking about 10, 20 millions, if at all, or they go abroad because there they have other opportunities. And our aim is to keep those companies here because with this research, and by the way, we are talking with US companies right now at the moment who could do a part of their research here because we've got these really bright people here. And so how can we keep them here? So we decided to fund, uh, to, uh, to create uh, Kai Ventures with a 50 million uh, fund or uh, Swiss francs to support uh, startups in the field of quantum and AI. So this is our, uh, our part to this, to keep those companies here and also to attract more companies from abroad to come. And to not let history repeat itself. Exactly. Uh, I don't think quantum was invented here. Internet was. <laughs> yes. At the But uh, it's not too late and we want to play our role in this. I wish you all the best for your future plans. Thank you. Okay.